So, it's been a week. It's been a very, very exhausting week. Uh, last Monday, so it's Monday now, last Monday I spent about half my day looking for people that would be willing to work on the truck in a hurry, and I got six cold hard no's because of availability, just timing, parts weren't bought from them, so they said no, screw off, uh, didn't have the lift capable of jacking up the excursion, I mean it was just kind of a hodgepodge of things, but we got it done. There she is. I'll give you a full picture later, but I just wanted to show you kind of how comically big it is. Uh, she's big. She's big. He? She? I don't really have a name yet, I don't think. So, it was by no accident <laughs> and maybe several miracles that this came to be so fast. So you guys remember about two weeks ago, I purchased this excursion and then I immediately started talking to people about getting parts for it because I knew I wanted to drive this to Blade Show, Texas and I wanted a tent and a rack and everything on top and I wanted it as kitted out as I could get it possibly in two weeks, which right now is very difficult because parts availability is horrible. Um, the lift kit I wanted eight to 12 weeks out. Too bad, there's nothing I can do about that. So I had to go with an alternative. Uh, wheels and tires, I got what I wanted. Rack, I got what I wanted, but I had to go with a local tent because they're just kind of hard to come by right now. So long story short, they have a lot of people to thank for this. Uh, none of these are sponsors or anything. They just helped me out majorly. First, Zach Whitmore, Salty Gears Off-Road, that whole crew, they made it happen. They hooked me up with the parts. Um, as soon as I got this thing, I'm like, hey Zach, can you help me out? I need parts and they're all really hard to get right now. So. They pulled some stuff together and sent me this whole kit, which to be fair is a little taller, a little bigger than I was expecting or hoping for, but it's really growing on me. But we'll, we'll get to that later. Uh, the guy I got the tent from, he's local. His name is Brian and it was a great deal on this tent. This is not the tent I wanted. This tent's thick, it's tall, it's beefy. And as tall as this thing is already, I wanted a slimline tent. Too bad, can't get one. And I really like this, it was a great deal and a really, really cool tent. So I'm excited to sleep in it this week. Uh, so thank you, Brian, for being a boss. Uh, my friends, Garrett and Dylan, they've helped me shoot a lot of the videos. You can thank them for the uh, spicy, sausage, sauce, spicy sausage sequence in the Grimsmo video. Uh, they're videographers, but they do work with some off-road companies sometimes. And Outlaw Off-Road, thank you guys. They're the ones that put all this stuff on in a hurry and they were really great to work with. We had some like scares. Yeah, we had some scares because uh, sway bar on the rear, the linkage did not fit. So we had to come up with something, uh, different lug nuts because the lugs that Salty Gear sent me did not fit these wheels. So, I mean, it was just one little thing here, one little thing there, but Outlaw absolutely crushed it and, and the work's great and I, I love this and I'm so thankful that they turned this around in three days. Whew, big load off, huge load off. And then all my other friends, Jordan, who's behind the camera helping me right now, Joe, who's coming with me on this trip, he helped me fit this tent on there because that was another headache. Uh, Garrett helped me fit the rack on here. I mean, it's just been kind of a, I don't know, hodgepodge of everybody coming together and making this happen. So I definitely could not have made this happen by myself in such short time or period. So thank you anybody who helped with this build because uh, it was fast, two weeks, pretty quick. But uh, I want to show you guys what this turned into just, you know, because it's kind of fresh in your minds what it looked like before. And then we'll talk about the trip coming up and, and all the gear that I've got going with me. <sighs> I just want to breathe and sleep. <laughs> That's all I want to do right now, but later, right? I'll, I'll sleep in April or something. There she is, or he, I still don't know. I've been floating this name, the Ox, because people shorten excursion as the X, right? People call them my X, the X, whatever. 
Overland Excursion Ox. And it's also built like an ox. I feel like that's kind of dumb, but I think that might be the running name for now. But here she is. So this might give you a frame of reference because the thumbnail from the last video was taken right here. And uh, boy, is it a lot taller. Uh, this is a five inch lift. <laughs> Originally, I wanted like three to four inches, but availability set me with a five inch plus clearance issues with 35. So come around here real quick. Right here, tires I went with are 35 inch Yokohama Geolander XATs. I love these things so far. They ride great, uh, really quiet, lots of grip. Look, look at that tread, man. Big old cavernous treads, love it. Uh, you can probably see right in here, I did go with a rough country lift. Uh, the one I wanted to go with was BDS, but availability. So Zach assured me this rough country lift is actually pretty, pretty good for like a, just a, a leaf lift, but five inch rough country lift, 35s from 32s. So the total lift actually comes out to about six and a half, seven inches, all said and done. So definitely a little taller than I was bargaining for. Um, it's big and as my wife calls it, definitely has some small dick energy. So uh, I kind of felt that a little bit when I first drove it home and it didn't have a rack or anything, but I think the whole picture together kind of gets rid of that a little bit, at least for me. I genuinely don't care because I fucking love this thing now. Like it's great, it's, it's perfect, almost. We're getting there, but in its current form, I really like it. So the first two mods, suspension uh, oh and the wheels i didn't talk about the wheels um these are methods the mr701s are 17 inch uh, and just super super nice matte black brims i think that completes the look and, and keeps it from looking too i don't know maybe yee yee like a lot of these with like the black and silver and stuff like i just wanted something very very plain so i think it makes this look pretty good this is a mod i did pretty quickly um put some aftermarket mirrors on it. These are from a Super Duty, so a little bit newer style, and they're also bigger. The OEM mirrors, which I can show you in a minute, are much narrower, just as tall, but you couldn't see anything out of them. These right here, you can see everything, everything behind you. Ugh. Okay, and now up here, we have a Rhino Rack Pioneer platform. This thing, I knew this is what I was gonna put on any other rig. I have a front runner, slimline for the Land Rover, but the Rhino Rack was the immediate choice for this, this build, uh, mainly because it fits straight into the factory rails. The front runner rack for this thing, actually you have to drill into the rails all the way up here. And I, I don't know, I don't mind drilling. It's just, I feel like this three quarter platform was just a better call, especially for time constraints. And then this desert armor this tent is a clamshell style so it opens up this way and folds out it goes up in like a minute it's wonderful but the trick is that this thing's really up here this right here is 91 inches to the top of the rack actually since i've got you here let's try to measure the actual total height <laughs> hang on let's get a tape measure All right, I don't know how I'm gonna do this one-handed. <laughs> We're at about 102 inches, maybe 103. That's tall. That means this is basically eight and a half feet tall. The rack was tricky because I had to install it myself and it wasn't until I got it into the shop that I thought maybe I'm gonna have an issue. Um, the door goes up 89 inches. The rack is 91 when it's installed. So <laughs> we had to prop the door up a little bit and squeeze it out through the door, uh, but we made it. Getting it on there by myself was a little tricky. So Garrett helped me square it up yesterday. And then Joe, who's now behind the camera, Jordan had to go home because it's after five. Um, <laughs> uh, Joe helped me get the tent up here, which posed its own problems because it's, uh, 91 inches high. Like how do you get a 126 pound tent that high? Well, we backed this thing up to a loading dock 
threw it on here and then realized that the mounting rails for the tent don't line up with the crossbars for the platform. We just had to drill straight through the slats in the platform to bolt the tent directly to the roof rack, which not ideal, but that's what Rhino Rack and Roof Nest, which is not who the tent maker is, but that's what is recommended is just to bolt straight to the Pioneer platform. So the other problem that I narrowly avoided is that this, the, the, the limit on your weight, your, your dynamic weight limit on the excursion for your roof rack, your standard rails is 200 pounds, which for some reason I didn't even think to look at before I ordered all this stuff. The Rhino rack is 74 pounds and the Desert Armor tank tent, which is what it's called, ironically, is 126 pounds. So if you do the math, that is exactly 200 pounds, which means technically I should not put anything else on top of this thing, but that's probably not gonna happen. I'm probably gonna put a few things up there, but yeah, that's the, the build there. And then around back here, so back here is really where I haven't put any thought or time into really. Um, all of these are empty still literally nothing in these this is that bench made case i got last year literally nothing in it so i'm going to pull the foam out of this one or cut the foam into a way that works this is one from back when i did cell phone reviews htc which i don't even know if they're a company anymore they sent this i got some new o lights and stuff in here but I, i'm gonna use these different pelican cases for storage for you know kitchen stuff fire starting so whatever i need that for i've got this one right here i really want to get some more of these this is a step 22 stingray flat box so if this is empty you can fold it flat and it doesn't take up any space so i just have storage but it's all empty um this thing i'm bringing with us but i don't know if we're actually going to use it this is an annex for that tent so when you fold the tent out you can attach this annex and you have just this huge enclosed area uh, it looks like a massive pain in the ass to put it together but I haven't tried it and the guy that i bought the tent from brian he never put it up because it was on back order so he used the tent a bunch never used the annex so it's literally never been used we drug it out last night to look at it and <laughs> we're like uh nah not right now i have uh, a few power banks and these are mostly going to be to keep my laptop charged because i'm going to be editing videos on the road um keep our phones charged and keep this running this right here is a camco 46 liter fridge i think my friend's letting me borrow it so this one is not mine but it is a refrigerator so we can keep food and drinks and stuff in there on the road and these will keep that running uh, i don't think i put it in here i think it's in the shop still but i have a 100 watt solar panel that will charge these jackeries I don't know how I'm going to charge the anchor. Uh, it's got a different input. Standard input for these is eight millimeters. Of course, anchor used 7.9. Originally, we thought maybe Joe would just sleep here and I'll sleep in the tent, but I don't want to be like pulling stuff out and moving things around just to set a platform for him to sleep on at night. But I think the most logical thing to do is to bring the trailer, which some of you guys may not even know about. Let's go show him the trailer real quick. So this is my off-road trailer that I've had for six years and haven't touched in two. <laughs> I did a video on it on my old channel, but I haven't really touched this thing in a while and I don't know what kind of work it's gonna need to get it going. And we have a day and a half, so not even. I think it's actually looking pretty good. The biggest concern was that the shock on that side looks a little low, but their air shocks, and I think it's just the temperature. If I just pump some air into it, it might level out. So story on this thing, I bought this back 2015, 2016, I think. Um, it's an M416 military trailer. This is all the information you need to know, actually. So cargo trailer, it's quarter ton, M416, manufactured by Stevens Manufacturing in Ebensburg, Pennsylvania, uh, 1967. 
was the delivery date. But basically, I bought this from a guy in Chattanooga who did 95% of the work. So he built and put he put a 20 gallon freshwater tank so you can drink out of this. I definitely need to flush the water and cycle it a few times with some bleach. Um, but he also installed up here a DC powered pump. So that pumps water out and it will actually pump it all the way over to this over here, which is a water heater. So propane tanks on the front, hook that up to propane. You have water, hot water even. So this solves a couple of problems. We could have definitely fit in the excursion, but we didn't have a way to take a shower on the road. We could have stopped at hotels and stuff, but the whole point in driving was to avoid that because it's sleeping this. So we can pull this and have showers. I built in lights, so it didn't have lights on it before. It had one really bad light. Uh, Rick and I wired up some corner lights on this. They're nothing special. We have the storage box, which is kind of set up as a kitchenette. It's not super efficient, and I'm definitely gonna rework this whole trailer, and this is gonna be not used how it is currently. But you do have a sink with water that drains out the bottom um, and just storage, and he built these super fancy blocks that you can put right here and put a stove here and cook. Um, not the most stable, but it is better than nothing. But, as you probably already noticed, it also has a rooftop tent. This is a very, very old rooftop tent. I believe this is over 15 years old. Because when I got this from the guy in 2016, I guess, he said he'd already had it for 10 years. And then I've had it for five. So this thing has seen a lot of use and it's still going strong. The only thing that really needs help is this cover. Uh, one of these straps dry rotted and flew off. There's holes in the corners, but the tent itself works great. I think this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna haul this behind the excursion. Is it overkill? <laughs> Absolutely. Do we need to bring this? No. Are we? Hell yeah. <laughs> Plus, I bought this thing and I've only used it like maybe 15, 20 times in five years. So I'd like to get it some, get it back on the road. Right here. Now we're going your way. That's probably good. Let's get this. I think we're gonna to be too short. Oh, come on! Right there. I think I can make it work. <laughs> you have it going backwards? Nope. Look at that. Yeah! Well, uh, trailer's hooked up. It looks like we might be okay with the air struts. I think we can make it there back without issue. Tank definitely needs to be cleaned out though. Look at this. I ran into the same problem last time. All this right here is mold. Might be easier to re replace this hose, cap it, and just uh, flush this with some bleach water. What do you think, Joe? Ready. You ready for this trailer to be your home for two weeks? <laughs> 12 days. Oh, 12 days, yeah. Two weeks, 12 days. I feel like I'm gonna be on the bottom bunk. You are gonna be on the first floor. <laughs> down here and I will be <laughs> on the second floor way up there I mean it's yeah look at the difference it's considerable amount of difference look at the difference yeah, it's like three four feet maybe yeah it's <laughs> it's significant what about it my eyesight, my line of sight, is right at the top of your hood. Like, from my driver's seat in a lifted LR3. How inadequate do you feel now? I'm gonna be seeing my doctor. <laughs> <laughs> it looks ridiculous. It really does. I feel like a small man compared to your enormous ride. She big. For, for reference. For reference, you did say ride, not rod, right? Shoulder, correct. <laughs> Shoulder height, Freudian slip. 
So, a little bit of a an issue. I did not clear out the lines on the water heater. So this little valve right there broke, cracked. And Joe, Papa Joe, Papa Granddaddy Joe, Joe is Sleepy gonna fix Joe. it. Sleepy Joe, we can call him that. MacGyver it, we're not, I don't know that we're really gonna fix it. We're gonna, we're gonna band-aid it. We're gonna stick so much marine weld in there that it can't possibly leak. Like that whole cavern, it's gonna be cut. full. You'll never be able to fix it again, but only, you won't need to. It can't possibly leak. There's only one question though. Is it, do we take that screw out before putting it in there? Or do we do it with the screw in? Screw in. I don't know. Bro, if this doesn't work, I'm replacing that thing in Texas. <laughs> Jordan, you got little fingers? Tiny fingers? Man, I feel like my finger is... Yours is substantially larger than mine. Is it? No. Put your finger in there. What a weird way to... <laughs> yeah, we're out here judging <laughs> fingers. I could, I could squeeze the silicone down. Alright, well you are a guy. You were putting the gloves on and you Let's are... Do it. He's, hey, we got a new mechanic. We traded up. Mechanic Jordan. Yeah, in my just because, super mechanic outfit. Just because he's got little fingers. <laughs> Tiny hands. <laughs> you're gonna need both because you're gonna have to hey. knead this stuff together. You, Excuse me? You had a son in the army? How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> we had a guy at uh, Academy. We're walking in and he's like, hey. Stop Joe. You got a son in the army? <laughs> nah. <laughs> Not my shirt. I just Goodwill. Like, I just like this for attention. Yeah. You're one hundred percent correct that that's the toughest part. It's right there. But it's going down in. You're figuring that thing pretty good. <laughs> I've never been accused of being a selfish lover. <laughs> Joe said Don't let me forget. We gotta bring the snacks. We got snacks. We've got snacks. Well I didn't. My wife did. Your wife, Leanne, got snacks. So this is just the first run. I mean, there is some stuff here you'll eat. Dude, cars is good. That's good stuff. Yeah, you'll eat that. You Cheese. might eat with those. Nah. You're not doing those. What was the other? Rice Krispies. <laughs> Hell no. Okay, so Oh, I got... didn't even see there's chocolate. <laughs> one for three on the snacks right now. All right, one for three. Homie's on a cut. <laughs> <laughs> like, I thought I was breaking bad by maybe bringing some Cheez-Its. No, no, she, she kind of gave us a, a good run. What we got here? The M and M's, toast chi, yeah. What's that? that pub mix? I think under my chin. What is this whale? <laughs> I have no idea. I can't see it. What is it? Are, are those graham crackers? No, can't be. Can't be. Check out. What's oh no, is. that's tuna. It's star kiss tuna. Duh. Oh my god, dude, I'm on a cut. That's not bad. It's oats. Those are okay. Uh, okay. Don't lie. Bro. Some old habits we just can't get away from. <laughs> what do you think it's going to be? I have no idea what this is. Oh my god, <laughs> dude. What? Leanne, I, I really appreciate it, but we can go to the store. Well, okay. To be fair, you're married to Joe. Yeah. Who, like, you have to tie Some his shoes for him in the morning. Somebody has to look after me. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. All right, let's get this shit packed up. It is uh, 10.35 Tuesday night. We're leaving sometime-ish tomorrow morning, and uh, we just gotta get the all of this. It's before noon. The goal is to leave before noon. We gotta get all of this somehow condensed in, in a somewhat organized way into the back of the excursion. There's no shortage of size. There's a lot, a lot of space. Too much space, in fact, but you need to have it organized. So. We got bins. We do have bins. We don't have enough. We need another Plano Sportsman. We really do. But uh, that's it for now. I'll see you guys in Texas. Hopefully, I'll see you there. If not, I'll see you here. Um, if you are there, Come to that little tactile knife meetup thing. That's gonna be a lot of fun. If you wanna know more about that, that is in, I'll link it in the description, but more information is over in the Facebook group. There's an event for it there. I hope to see you there if you come to Blade Show. Come to that little after party thing. 
that's it for now. Uh, everything I talked about in this video, if it's relevant, will be linked down below. That means all the people that helped build this, uh, Zach and uh, Salty Gears Off-Road, Outlaw Off-Road, Market Street Studios, which is my friends Garrett and Dylan, Joe, who is Rustic Heirloom, and a bunch of my other friends. Everybody who made this happen, I'll link everything down below so you can uh, go thank them for me. But that's it for now. Love you guys. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in Texas. Carry on. I uh, convinced Joe to leave some snacks behind. So we have one whole tote of snacks for two days on the road. I vote he tells Leanne that we didn't take all of her snacks. No, you tell <laughs> Leanne. All that's left is that, which is gonna be my clothes. This is gonna be coffee, water, and we're packed. Trailer's good to go. And we have so much room left. So much room.